ODBC data in workflow certified and I hope that you all know what is ODBC which is basically an interface by Microsoft which allows the which allows to access data from the database using SQL query okay so before we start using before we start using ODBC in certify there are certain things which you should know and you need to make sure that those things are in place okay first you should know what is your database type whether it is Oracle or SQL server or DB2, then where it is located, in which server and what is the name of server, what is the name of database, what are the tables and columns involved, where you are going to write your SQL queries, okay, so those things you should know and most important that what are the credentials to access those database. Then once you have those details with you, you need to go and create a data source in your system. In your system means from where you are going to develop your certify process. So I, I will not go into that deep into data source. How it, it, how it can be created but that just to give you an overview you can go to control panel and then you can select your administrative tools from there and from there you can select depending upon the system which you are using 32 bit or 64 bit you can select ODBC data source 64 or 32 bit okay and then here you can select system or user DSL so user DSL is basically restricted, restricted to the user who creates it and system DSL means no matter who is the user, it is available for all the user for from the given system. So from you here you can create the data source. And in order to create a data source, you need to give some name of your data source. Then you need to give the server name, database name, database credentials, and all, and then accordingly it will create. And whatever name you will give, it will display here. So in my case, I am using certified DSL. Okay. So this is one thing then you go to certify and i hope you know what is what is what data source does it is basically an interface between your application and your database your application is certify and your database can be anything any database right like oracle db2 or sql server so what it will do when you write or when you perform or when you execute any step with the sql query then that uh, query will go to your data source data it is basically a request for data source then it will go to your database it will submit that re request to database on that request database will give some answer and your data source will submit that answer back to your application so this is how it, it, it happens so this is one process here which you see and in certify you can find this odbc data inside system system and object will be odbc data where all where you find all the basic objects like mm, date variable number text etc so you you add one step and when you have a step like this with ODBC data as an object then for that object you will see that there are only two actions available in certify one is database store and one is database verify so basically what it means that we can only either store the database value into a certify variable or we can verify a database value from a certify variable that's it or certify value means we cannot or we are not supposed to modify any database value that is very important means if somebody says you go and update the value then you, the answer is no this cannot be done in certify and not in certify basically as a tester we are not supposed to modify any database value okay so this is very important so now coming back to this step so basically how a query looks like when you write some query in any database or when you write any SQL statement then how it looks like it is basically select star from table right or select column 1 column 2 column 3 from table right so in certify you need to write your query in such a way so that it returns only one row and one column why only one row and one column because whatever the re result will be of your query it is going to be stored in a certify variable one certify variable so if your query returns multiple rows and columns then how it will how a certify variable will accommodate all this so basically it will fail and your certify will throw some error so if you have 10 15 or 20 validations or database store you need to perform then you need to write 10 15 20 steps okay there are no alternate ways of that 
So in certify step, you need to write, as, as you said, select, then what you want to select. This is first name. First name is basically a column name. Select first name from user. This is a table. So now the query looks like select first name from users. Okay. Now, if I say select first name from user, if you see select first name from users, if I run this query here in database, see it runs two row, right? Gautam and administrator. And as I, say, as I said, your query should return only one row and one column. So in certify, you cannot write any select without a where clause. Okay, where clause is basically where you give some condition for your query. So my condition is where login name is equal to admin. Now, if you run this entire query now with a where clause in database, it returns one row and one column that is administrator. Okay, so this is how we write a query in certify, and then th you need to store this output means this result of your query or the output of your query in a variable. So this is basically the certify variable which you, I think you, you you all are aware of this symbol in certify. Then certify deletion. Okay. This is basically the data source which I just showed you. This is basically a data source which we have created and which an interface between your application in certify and the database. Okay. And then you need to write the or you need to provide your database credential, your database username and password. Okay. So this is one thing. Okay. So as you see in you database the return is administrator okay so here also it will return administrator now what i am doing here i am and as you can see that the store the sorry the re result of this query i am storing in a temp variable okay now i am setting that temp variable to a different value admin so temp here is administrator and now in the very next step it becomes admin and then i am doing a database verify see the action here is store means we are storing something from database verify means we will be verifying something to database okay so now again we need to write the query so query again is select login name from users that is table okay where clause will be there okay where first name is equal to administrator okay so now this query will return some result okay now since the action is verify database verify so verify value means whatever return is here whatever value comes for this query will get verified by this value means this term variable which is admin so here also it will return administrator uh, sorry it will return admin or whatever we will see and then again the odbc connection that is database uh, sorry certified deletion and then your database credential okay now if you want to this very verification to be a case sensitive then you can select this checkbox otherwise if you uncheck this one then no matter whether it is uppercase lowercase it all will be same so this is one thing so let me execute these steps first then we'll see the remaining steps okay so you, as you can see the return value interface return value let me expand this column interface return value is administrator okay now this time become admin now again there is some query and then we'll verify admin is equal to admin okay so this is done now if i change this value here okay if i make admin as john then let me see what happens okay just check that okay so this failed okay because the return here for this query is admin and admin is not equal to John. Okay. So I hope this is clear. Now, now suppose I, I write this kind of query select this is my database, select star from users or select star from process. Okay. So you can see there are many rows there are many columns and the total is basically 139 row here if you see okay 139 rows now if there is a requirement that there is some specific table and the requirement says you need to write a query in such a way so that it returns the total number of rows available in that table okay so how you will write in certify so the query basically is select count in bracket you can give the h star symbol the asterisk from process okay so let me see if i write this same query in database
okay so that is 139 which you see here okay now how to write this one in 35 so again select count from process now in the database if you see we don't have any where clause right and i just said that in 35 when you write any sql statement or search query there needs to be a where clause so here the where clause is basically you can give something like one equal to one okay so if you don't give this one then your query will fail and you, you will get some error at run time okay so this is one and then whatever will be the result it will be stored in this variable so let me quickly execute this one so here also you will see will see 139 so 139 is the return okay now if you have seen the record set object okay record set object there is an action called sql to record set okay what it does it basically what what it does sql to record set means what all queries you are going to write or you have written the result of that query will get imported into your record set okay now suppose i write a query select a star from uh, let me show you here select a star from process suppose if i write this query okay select a star from process so it return many rows and many columns so in this case i need to create a layout with all these variables properly aligned and then i can use that layout and the output of this query will get stored into the record set associated with that layout okay so what here i have done i have done select name description from process okay so this is my query complete query here if i run this query in database so this is my query so it returned me two two columns here name and description okay and then these are the values total 139 rows are there okay so what it will do it will run this query in database okay this is basically the data source here certified ds1 then we'll have odbc my database username password and then the layout associated here means this is the layout and record set where the result of this query will get imported so if you see this record set here demo underscore one this is basically empty okay this is empty so when i run this record set will be filled with the values okay second i have shown one more thing here one more sql to record set that is basically if you see select only get details now what is get details get detail is the stored procedure which is created in the database now if you see if i run execute this procedure okay it returned me something right it returned this three th three columns okay and what all data is there in that basically table so get detail is nothing but a function you can say and which is created in a database and there is a code associated to that and this is the name so what all code is there the code is getting executed with this syntax with this command so if i have some short procedure created in my database and i want to trigger that procedure from my certify process so i can do that okay so i will just call get details okay and this is the again your data source and then your database credentials here and then the result will get stored into this record set so if you see this record set is also empty i guess this is empty okay so now let me run this entire process at one go and then you can see okay so this is done okay now and see the record sets which were empty earlier now see whether those record sets are populated with the data or not so let's see this one first so you can see this is basically the procedure which i have re executed here see these three columns two rows and you will find the same thing in 35 two columns sorry two rows three columns okay so here one thing is important that layout you need to create manually and you need to create in such a way so that it is in sync with your query now suppose you are saying select first name and last name 
so in your layout you need to add first the variable first name first uh, last name last second okay so if you don't do that then your values will go into wrong variable that is important then in this one 139 was there so let me see or let's check uh, how many rows are here so as you can see all 129 rows are stored in this record field so this is basically how we can use odbc data in partition okay so hope it makes sense for you thanks for watching